I'm a self-taught farmer. I'm not by nature a farmer. I've always loved animals. I find animals easier to get along with than people any day of the week. Farming interested me since long ago, since I arrived in Chicago as a child. I put a farm on top of a dresser in the dorm with eight other kids. It was board, 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 and plywood underneath, all nailed together, filled full of earth and plants. I wanted something growing in my life. I've always liked nature and figuring things out, what, why does this grow? But at the Orthogen School, nobody cared about that. I asked myself when I was a kid, because I was at war with everybody, why am I this way? What, what is going on here? I am smart, and I figure that's a gift. And what's my obligation with this gift? That's been the question I've asked myself since the day I was cognizant. And when I first licked plastic as a child, it was called Bakelite, was not called plastic. I licked it and I asked about why is that burning my tongue? I was told don't lick it. That wasn't my question, Dad. How we treat our children tells us a lot about ourselves. And having been mistreated as a child, royally, I mean, it was a fascinating experience. I had six and a half years in a nut house. That was a fascinating experience. And then I entered Wall Street and that's a different nut house. It hasn't been easy, and I'm 83, and it still isn't easy. This is the Lewis family farm in Essex, New York, in Essex County. We have done the things that all should do, and everybody agrees with that. We have done the things that everybody respects and nobody disrespects. Thank you very much. I go to town meetings, they're screaming at me at town meetings. I said, go fuck yourself, I'm doing the right thing. And I tore out the Clark Farm up here and the Evans Farm down the hill and all the rest. Today, they worship the ground we walk on. For me, arguing is just fun and games. And I particularly like arguments that I inspire because I kind of know where they're coming out. There's nothing like a good fight, if you have a good purpose. I don't fight for the sake of fighting. I believe that there's a life pyramid. That's what I believe. This is Sandy, not some textbook. Places the most complex animals at the top. And I believe that the smallest living things, which are down here, in this area, are in fact very small. And if they're unhealthy, we die. Therefore, our job, which we're not doing very good at, is to really worship and respect the smallest living things. Something that happened here at this farm caused me to think back to something that happened to me as a five-year-old. I end up taking sulfur pills. You bust them up, you mix them with milk, and you make the kid swallow and he vomits. That's the life I had, badly mistreated as a kid. Until one day, it's our pediatrician, and he comes in with a needle and goes ah, like this on my rear end, and I'm a little kid. I mean, you see a needle, and you're a child, you don't forget it. I felt good the next day. It's the next day. So I asked, what the hell was that? That's a miracle drug. But what is it? It's penicillin. What's penicillin? Nobody knew what it was. In fact, it was restricted to the military. Because dad had clout, this guy could get it out of Mount Sinai, brought it down and bang me. One needle! And I'm feeling good the next day. You don't forget that when you're taking all these pills of vomiting and lying in your own vomit. 
to me this all collapses. Antibiotics. One day I was in my kitchen with Gus. Up here, Gus, up here. And Gus and I got a phone call from Paul who said that two bulls out here were dead. I said, well, I'm sorry to hear that. How'd they die? He said, I think they gored each other. He called the vet and asked him to come over here and do a field autopsy. Both had pale lips and pale nostrils because their red blood cells had been impacted by anaplasmosis. these cattlemen across the United States are doing about anaplasmosis. And the conclusion I came to is there's something in it for everybody. All farmers that wish to deal in accordance with their vet's instructions with anaplasmosis put tetracycline in the water. I didn't say some, all of them put the tetracycline from China in the water and the cows drink it. Tetracycline causes obesity in the cow. You can harvest them at 11 months. The farmers get their animals to market faster because they're fat. And it'll be in every store in America. I don't care what you buy in the store, taste the meat, it has no taste. You're eating cardboard. But don't worry, we've got A1 sauce, Sandy. Worcestershire sauce, ketchup, salt and pepper, and grind it up. You can eat it and have a beer, you're fine. But the bottom line is, oral antibiotics destroy the gut biome of the animal, which is not just the animal's immune system, but it is also the basic element within the animal that enables the brain to think. And we're destroying the smallest living things, which, after you do this often enough, and you shit all over the fields with your tetracycline, you will kill the food for the insects. That will starve the birds, and it's the canary in the mine shaft. If we don't stop mistreating the gut biome in livestock and in people and in old persons' homes, if we don't stop this careless use of antibiotics, we are going to wipe out our ability to resist infection. If this is healthy, it takes care of your Im immune system, also for your moods. So if you're in a good mood, I'm in a good mood, it's because your microbiome is super healthy. And if we honor the needs of the smallest living things, the whole damn pyramid's healthy. And if we don't, the pyramid's at risk. And it is my feeling, without any question, that various insults, insults to life itself, manifest themselves by the treatment of the smallest living things. And we see this as the daily killings of young boys who are less stable because of what's happening to their gut. There's something going on in their system. It's the gut biome. You just have to understand living things and don't be boxed in by what they teach you in schools. Think about it. Think about it. When I went to school, I always asked myself, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Does he know what he's talking about? And then I seek to embarrass them as much as possible. They are terrified of me. And the reason they're terrified is I have no education. I don't happen to have a PhD in anything. The arrogance of man, where they teach you in school, at least they did with me, is we can manage nature. No, let nature manage you.
You must respect nature and that means the smallest living things. 